Over the last 10 years, I have read over a thousand essays and what I've realized is that you either have the formula and you know how to write a really good paragraph or you just don't. There's literally no in between. And I vividly remember the moment that someone when I was doing a PhD told me and demonstrated what that formula looks like. And ever since then, I've always used that formula when writing essays and I ended up getting no corrections for my PhD. And that's because what I wrote just made sense. And whenever I teach, how to write an essay, this is the formula that I go through. I'm also going to be demonstrating it through two examples. One will be a more scientific example and one will be more of a humanities example to show you and demonstrate what this actually looks like in the wild. So let's get right into it. So the key premise of this structure is the Peel structure. So point, evidence, explanation, and link. Now, I know you've probably heard of the structure before. You've probably been taught how to use this in school when you were a lot younger for writing paragraphs and stories. But actually, no one actually shows you how to do this as an academic, or no one shows you how to now take this quite basic structure and create your own with an essay and the way that you want to do this is like for example let's say you're writing a 2000 word or 3000 word essay you want to have your introduction then argument one which should be the main and the strongest argument then argument two and that's the secondary argument then argument three and you can even keep on going into argument four or five if you want to keep on expanding and developing your discussion but even within argument one you can have let's say four or five of these paragraphs as long as you're following this exact structure so firstly, you want to have a topic sentence, and this is where you introduce the main point of the paragraph in relation to your thesis. Then you have the evidence, and here you're providing specific examples or quotations from sources. Then you have the analysis, here you're analyzing the evidence. Then you have a counter argument showing opposing views, and then you're linking it back to the thesis, and you're transitioning quite nicely into the next paragraph. Not necessarily the next argument, but just the next paragraph within that argument. So you might have like sub discussion points within one single argument. So let's look at an example. So I'm going to first start off with this biological sciences example. So you can see the different breakdowns of the different sections as I just mentioned. So the point here is CRISPR represents a groundbreaking advancement in gene editing technology due to its precision and efficiency. So you clearly know here that this is a a method or this is a tool that has caused groundbreaking results in this gene editing technology and straight away I know that the discussion of this particular paragraph will be about that so the point needs to be very clear and needs to embed what it is that you are going to be saying within the essay itself Moving on to the evidence. So now I'm talking about where it's been derived from and this enables precise modifications in DNA sequences. So I'm showing why this in particular is special. Then I'm saying these, uh, these authors have demonstrated that and you can see how I very cleanly and very smoothly input a citation. People tend to add citations quite harsh in a quite harsh way and I find that that takes away from the flow of the essay. So here you can see I've said, uh, you know, demonstrated that the protein guided by RNA can target and cleave specific genomic loci with unprecedented accuracy. It's really, really good. Then the next subsequent studies have shown that it's quite versatile and you can use it for these different things. So I've added two references here and I've spoken about two slightly different things, but still highlighting the main point be that there's a groundbreaking advancement in technology. Then I'm going to explain. The next thing is explaining what I've just said. So far, I've just mentioned some evidence. I've just given a citation, I've just given a source that proves my point, but now I need to go into it and, and explain it further. So these findings highlight CRISPR's transformative potential for therapeutic interventions. The ability to edit material, uh, can be good for genetic disorders. However, we do have concerns about off-target effects and ethical implications. For example, explain that. What do you mean? What do you mean it's unethical? Well, if there's unintended edits, we could lead to different uh, issues when it comes to safety. Uh, so addressing this requires further refinement and other ethical guidelines. So now I know there's an amazing, amazing advancement in this area. But actually, there still are some issues. This is what could happen because we don't yet know much about it, which is fantastic. That's not a bad thing to say. Um, and you've also 
given citations and evidence for this as well. And then I'm linking. So now I'm linking to my next point, which would be similar to what I've just said. And I'm saying, thus, while CRISPR has revolutionized gene editing, uh, we need to carefully consider ethical limitations and other ethical questions. And now I can continue and go on from there. And what you can do actually to tailor this is rather than just having an explanation that just discusses one thing, you can kind of go back to the evidence again. So I could do point, evidence, explanation, then evidence and point again. And this expands the paragraph a little bit to make it a little bit more unique and not so structured because you don't have to follow peel. You can follow P-E, E, E, L. <laughs> so a really longer E, E in the middle. I'm really excited that this portion of the video will be sponsored by Thesis AI. And I brought Thesis AI to you guys quite recently. It is the world's first AI assistant that can draft a whole scientific document with just one prompt. So all you have to do is input one prompt telling it what the topic is, and, and then you input your research papers. You can import up to 100 papers that you would like Thesis AI to refer to, and then you're able to get a whole scientific document with just one prompt of you telling it what exactly you want. So let me run you through a quick demo. So what you have to do is upload your research papers. So these are papers that you have found yourself and that you have identified as useful and valuable as part of your research. Once you upload them, and by the way, you can upload up to 100, you then give a prompt. So you write down something that you want Thesis AI to know about what it's about to write and what it can pull out from the research. So this could be specific details about the kind of essay you're writing, the kind of text you're writing, um, the kind of style you want or tone and things like that. And then you wait for about half an hour, it's usually a bit less, and you come up with this document. And as you can see, this is a 50 page document and it is editable. So you can make changes to the document and of course, um, modify it and tailor it to your own needs. But essentially it's a full structure of a research paper of the topic that I have provided for it, which in this case was climate change. And you can see that it has all the references. The references are true, they are valid, and it has lots of detail. There are obviously things that I personally would change in terms of personalizing it and making it my own. And I think this is really important for you to do as well if you're in academia. But if you do want like a good overview and a good first draft, this is really, really great. I even have a discount code, Amina20. So if you do want to check it out and get 15% uh, off, then go ahead and try it. I have been playing around with it quite a lot recently and people that I have spoken to have also really been enjoying it. So if you do want to try it out, um, something quite novel and something quite new to the area of AI and academic writing, then I will leave the link for it down below. Let me know if you do end up trying it. Now let's look at another example. So here I'm talking about social media uh, platforms. So the point is that social media platforms contribute significantly to political polarization by fostering echo chambers. So that's really interesting it's saying that social media can cause uh, people to be pulled towards different political directions because it it you're listening only and you're hearing only and you're seeing only one type of content because of your algorithm. Okay, good point. Where's the evidence? Here's the evidence. Um, in, 20, in 2001, it showed that like-minded groups tend to become more extreme in their beliefs online. And more recently, here's some more studies. And I gave examples of a case study, which is really good. Then they gave an explanation. The explanation is that uh, that this is what's happening because of pre-existing societal divisions. There's not enough diverse voices. Um, we need to understand it more. And here's the link. Therefore, we need to look at different solutions of how to moderate behavior online. Now, this is a really good example because actually there's not a yes or no when it comes to this research question. And using this structure, you can see that I've got a really clear point. I've given evidence. I've even given a case study of when this happened in the US presidential elections. I've explained it and and then I'm going to link it onto the next point that I'm going to be mentioning, which might be something to do with the multifaceted solutions, for example. And this has really expanded my paragraphs. You cannot go wrong like this because you've included a point, you've given me evidence, you've even given me critique, and now you're going to link it. It's a perfect, perfect structure. And when I see essays or pieces of writing that have been written like this, it makes me feel good because I know that this is a, a strong essay that's touched upon and included 
all the right aspects of the literature. So I hope that gave you a really good uh, overview of how to write a strong essay paragraph. I know my usual content is like AI and tech stuff, but I thought let's go back to the basics because I feel like people are just allowing these tools to do these things for you and not necessarily checking and reinforcing that the structure is correct. And even if you use tools like Thesis AI, which does an amazing job of writing this for you, you still need to make sure we're going in and looking and understanding how the structure is how the structure has come about and allowing yourself to understand what what these main points are and how how it's been developed um so like i said please check out thesis ai down below um if you want to uh go ahead and try it out with just one prompt you can write a whole uh, essay or literature review and i hope to see you in my next video okay bye